Hey everyone, it's your bestiest bestie in the world, uh, Drew Dracy, and uh, let's just talk about some funny books. Um, Batman had his own book, Batman, and he also had Detective Comics, where he de debuted, and they would come out two weeks apart, and sometimes they would have an ongoing thread between the two books, and weirdly enough, this is so nutty, like, if you went to Batman, there were like two Batman books a week, and sometimes an ongoing subpl subplot... Regular title Batman sold more than Detective Comics. I, I don't know. Maybe the casual reader would just pick up Batman over, uh, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, you know, Detective Comics. It's so weird. Well, um, Brave and the Bold was the third book, but it was a team-up book. It was originally... Um, Brave and the Bold started off with, like, uh, The Shining Knight and all these other characters uh, that they were trying out. And then eventually, I don't know, like around 60 or 70 or something, uh, they decided to make a Batman team-up book. And uh, what's funny, though, is Bob, the writer, Bob Haney, he had this really charming uh, dis, uh, disinterest in continuity. <laughs> there was a Green Arrow issue, and Bruce Wayne was a senator. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? It's like at first when you're a kid, you're like, that's annoying. And then you, you get won over by the script and the art. And it's like, you know, it's only comics at the end of the day. Um, Mike W. Barr, great writer, really overlooked. Nobody really talks about him. He, he did uh, Brave and the Bold. I mean, excuse me. <laughs> he did um, Camelot 3000. He did a uh, late. Uh, yeah, late 80s version of Detective Comics with Alan Davis, and uh, the second, uh, Jason, the second Robin, was actually very likable. And then later on, uh, Son of the Demon, which revealed that Batman had a son. It was uh, drawn by Jerry Bingham. And then there was more, but I don't know why. I mean, maybe he chooses not to. Maybe he's got going into another field, or people, I don't know, people are weird. There's a lot of great talent out there that aren't getting work anymore, and that's a shame. You know, for because it's a youth oriented culture, you know, what can you say? But uh, okay, let me get to the point. Brave and the Bolt 200 came out, uh, and they decided to shake things up a little bit. You know, they, they, I think later on, and I noticed this uh, discussion like with other team up books later in their run is if they didn't have a great character as the co star, the sales would be affected. So, uh, and usually uh, the co star was a lot of times you used characters that were homeless you had uh, uh metamorpho you had mr miracle you had um green arrow and all that and it was really good and it was only bat book i actually i bought because it was consistent you know and i love the paros version i mean i love i love neil adams version too but it's just i first got first books i ever picked up with batman had jim apero uh so what happens is in the first issue of batman and the outsiders batman is basically telling t uh the rest of the uh justice league to go pound salt and uh, I don't know what that means. That's an old-timey phrase. Norm MacDonald would have known what that is. But anyway, so he finds his team, Metamorpho, their old pals. Uh, they go way back, and Black Lightning and him have been pals as well. Katana is an all-new character. I love that design. And Halo, she's a 16-year-old amnesiac. and uh, But she little by little, she's learning about the world. And Geoforce, he is this uh, royalty, uh, Prince Byron, who uh, control? He got these powers to control the elements. So a real nice mix of different, you know, characters and different powers. And Mike W. Barr's writing. Jim Apero, not only the penciler, not only the inker, he's the letterer, and he's been the letterer, and it, it, that's just amazing to me. It's like you just don't see that package, and he really made everything like that. Love that long panel there. And it's like, when they started Batman Outsiders, I really thought, oh, you know, if it's not just Batman or one of the characters, maybe a pair won't be into it or maybe it won't be that great, but I was wrong. Um, what's really cool, though, is not that. A Spider-Man ad in a, in a DC comic. That happened a lot back then. Um, Mike Barr wisely decides to not have any thought balloons or word balloons, you know, except for this guy coming in. You know, it's not like she's saying, you know, spirits of my ancestors, or yeah, everybody says that kind of shit. But uh, yeah, you know, it lets and the acting of the figure by Jim Apero is just fantastic. You know, you know exactly what's going on, and because uh, some artists need to have, uh, you know, a bunch of captions and such. I like the coloring too by Adrian Roy, and. Uh, 
I like Metamorpho too. So uh, Katana's sword is laying around. They found it and uh, they grabbed it. She grabbed it and it's speaking to her. And it says, you are not Katana. I know, but I'm a friend. And uh, she leads away. Not much further, you guys. And there's Black Lightning. Like, now, uh, always in every superhero comic back then, there was always a one character who always like had one foot out the door. And he's like, I like the Outsiders, but I wonder what good I'm doing. And now, much long or how much longer I can go before my conscience drives me nuts. Because he uh, he was a school teacher, and I guess this was you know he he was getting divorced from you know being in his neighborhood, and and much like the Falcon, who was a social worker. So uh, that's a nice little subplot. But it's so funny how like he, I showed in a previous episode with the the champions. It's like Iceman was ready to leave by issue four, and uh, there goes Geo Force. And he is, if his costume looks familiar, there's that old Dodge, two things crash together. Um, there's Jared Kubert. Um, the only thing is, uh, well, Tara, the uh, young girl who uh, worked with, um, she became a Teen Titan and then she betrayed them. Uh, Prince Byron is her brother and they don't know each other's alive uh, until there was a crossover between Batman and the Outsiders and uh, new Teen Titans. Oh, no, I love to read. I love reading this. Like uh, I'd pick up a book. I'd be coming out of the art institute, and you know, I'd see a book on the newsstand to read on the way home. Uh, and Dick Giordano had these great, you know, meanwhile, uh, you know, updates. And you know, he does hawk some wares, but there were a lot of times he'll take you through his day. You know, uh, he would wake up at like four thirty or something like that, or five, and uh, ink spent a half hour inking a page and then he would get uh on the subway and all this other stuff and i was like wow that, that's just amazing he gave it a real nice personal feel so uh oh, i really went on about that ms mystic it's uh pacific comics interestingly enough um the first couple issues are published by pc comics which had published a uh, little um jack kirby's um uh, What's his name? Captain Victory, uh, also uh, Mike Grell, Star Slayer, and uh, also some horror stories written by, uh, horror anthologies written by Bruce Jones and stuff like that. Uh, oh, the Rocketeer started there too. Dave Stevens' Rocketeer was a backup strip. Uh, I can't remember what the actual book was. Uh, but anyway, two issues got public, uh, published, but Pacific Comics, which was the distributor, they either went out of business or decided not to get in the comics game anymore because it to fight marvel and dc you know that's not easy especially back then when you didn't have you didn't have message boards you didn't have ways to um communicate with fans and try and build a fan base you know it was either you saw the book or you saw the 57 uh marvel reprint books that came out that week that people would gravitate to uh so there was a it, this book was basically annually done uh because uh um, Neil Adams was very ambitious about publishing. He later on published his own, uh, he became Continuity Studios, which is the name of the studio where many artists graduated from. Uh, and uh, so what he did was, this first, for a couple issues, it's all Neil Adams except Corey Adams, who could be his brother, could be his son, I'm not sure, uh, lettering by the great John Costanza. And uh, beautiful stuff, beautiful stuff. Um, her power is she summons power from the earth. Uh, her power is kind of vague, but she's really, in my opinion, like way too powerful. But this is pure Neil, and I like the coloring too. It's very bold for 1984. You know, it's perfect. It was really advanced. So people go on about uh, Malibu in their colors, but uh, you know, like the you know, like the skin there. I mean, that's uh, pretty amazing stuff. And apparently, when she is in trouble, she can summon uh, Mother Earth to get her out of problems. And I hate it. I hate that. It's like, you know, why even bother struggling? Just say, okay, I'm, I'm a uh, avatar for Mother Earth. I'm going to kick all your asses. We know, <laughs> you know, we're, we're, there's no discussion, no argument about this. Uh, oh, by the way, she does create Earth Four, which is they have different elements. Like uh, part, one guy's water, and another. It's a long story. But it's beautiful. It's beautiful. 
Sun Runners. I covered that once before. Another PC comic. This backup is by a guy named Chris Miller, and I don't know who he is. And shame on me, because uh, I can always look it up. But if anybody knows, please comment below. I really like this style. I can't really quite describe it. It's got a little bit of, I don't know, a little Mike Plug or something like that. I don't know. Let me know below, please. Uh, as many comments as you want, give them to me. So, Peter Parker's Spectacular Spider-Man. Such an uneven book. Oh, my gosh. The first, like, year or so was awful. Uh, it was created, it was the only second book, Spider-Man book, aside from Marvel Team-Up. Very much like Batman was. Uh... And Jerry Conway, just, he created it. Uh, he decided to write it, but, you know, he left after three issues because then he went over to D.C. and he upset a lot of Apple carts. And so this book was messed up. They had so many different writers. And thankfully, Sal was kind of a steady... Uh, yeah, he was the... Yeah, him and Esposito were the steady continuity um, creators. Uh, but anyway, like, issue six had a Morbius story, but... On the inside, the, the cover said so, but on the inside, it was a reprint of Marvel Team-Up 3, which was ridiculous, or 3 or 4, because the book wasn't even 10 pages, you know, 10 issues old. And uh, then they've continued the story, but that's very Bronze Age Marvel. But, you know, I love it. I love the love that posing. Archie Goodwin took over for a while, and then Bill Mantlo took over. But uh, it's pretty cool, because uh, last time... Uh, Vulture showed up in Amazing Spider-Man. You know, he wasn't, I don't know. He was interesting, but he seems really like trying to get back to say, hey, you know, I'm a tough guy. Love that. Clotheslined by a branch. Archie Goodwin is a master storyteller. And I like that Morgan, who is this uh, bad guy, is he's like this, um, this head mobster uh, in Harlem. And he's usually with the Falcon. He's always trying to make trouble with the Falcon, or Falcon's always trying to break up his schemes, uh, you know, no matter what it is. Uh, Vulture comes out, and he comes out like a real badass here. Hangs him down, and he's like, ah, oh, you humiliated me, you piece of. And, uh, Shashan and uh, Flash Gordon, possibly the most boring uh, subplot ever. Uh... Some cool stuff going on. And what I do like is at the time, there was a lot of time spent on like little things like this. He gets up, and he changes, and he's like freezing. Little stuff like that. It's got a lot of charm to it. There we go. Greetings, Beak Puss. I have... I hear you've been looking for me. Ah, much better, much better. This is a great page here. That'd be a nice page to own. Really fun, exciting stuff, and, and Sal's just put all. Of that. I think Sal did this one also, maybe, but it's very different. I don't know if somebody, I don't know, maybe it's it might be Arvel Jones. It looks a lot like Arvel Jones when he did a couple of his Iron Man, Iron Man, as we say in Pittsburgh. So here comes the Hitman, who was hired by Morgan, and he's going to kill both Spider-Man and the Vulture. Vulture's big old schnoz. Okay. I'm going a little long on this episode. I hope you don't mind. Okay. Now, I found this uh, in the dollar bin. and It's really nice production. It's uh, Entity Comics. It came out in 1993. Cats Studio. However, uh, it falls a little short. I mean, they spent a lot of money. There's like a ton. This, this is like, this paper is like thick enough to cut down a tree to make another piece of paper like this. Um, I love that costume. That is a fantastic costume. Um, you know, as an inker, I have to say, I don't like the inking. It's too rough and too... It's kind of... I don't know. It, it's kind of muddy and... Uh, I don't know. The inker could have practiced a little more. I hate saying that. I don't want to be a dick. I'm just saying it's not strong. It It's... But the coloring is great, and the storytelling is top notch. I really like it, and uh, it really is. And uh, oh yeah, who is this? Uh, I hate logos that you can't read. It says Metal Militia, but 
if you go back this and you put it on the shelf, you won't know what the frig that is. So, this is the only issue I found. Oh, really nice page here. So, and there's Legends of the Dark Moon. And again, the inking is just real scribbly and sloppy. But, you know, I think with a little time, I don't know if there are any issues afterwards. Uh, I think the uh, inker would have gotten better. So, because I never try and openly discourage uh, anybody from honing their craft. Uh, Daredevil 300. I love Daredevil, as you know. I'm always covering it. It's so funny. This was this costs more. Usually, it's for cover enhancements, like back then. You know, of course, foil. Uh, but the only special thing they did. It's so funny. Shiny paper versus matte paper, which means flat and non-reflective. And uh, Lee Weeks was on the art, and uh, you know, Senti wrote it for a while. But then this is uh, D.G. Chichester, and uh, he, he gets a lot of flack. I don't know what it is. Um, his Daredevil is really good. Um, and he did the thing where he could tell the story with uh, uh, of how how Matt Murdock slash Daredevil sees things. Like he would talk about smells and f touching and all kinds of stuff, how he operated. And he could follow people. And uh, what I love about this is that he, at the time, Jason still had that, uh, you know, that Adolf mustache going, which was ridiculous. You know, there's, there's staying... There's one thing is like staying on model, and then there's change with the times, and it changed with the times eventually, but it was like the late '90s, I think. So he he used uh, Lee used the um, Venetian blinds to cover up that bad mustache, the the very bad mustache. And uh, same thing happened with David Mazzucchelli, I think uh, he did the Jameson too. So really sweet stuff, and you've got. You got Lee Weeks. I mean, I loved his stuff. I always followed his stuff. Real nice guy. Anchor Al Williamson. Long time. He got he inked all the John, John Romita Jr. stuff too. He's just fantastic. A legend from EC Comics in the fifties, and he just became. He did a Star Wars adaptation of. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Oh, anyway, <laughs> I can't even say. But he did some beautiful stuff at EC Comics. Uh, well. Top at the uh, Wilson, uh, Wilson Fisk, Wilson Fisk's, <laughs> aka the Kinpins uh, office. There's paper slats everywhere because Hydra had blasted the room, and somehow Kingpin and his uh, top aide. Uh, oh, now here's the thing. Now he got busted on this. This was something that I think might have caused the whole world of embarrassment. Somebody says, oh, "Here we go." Uh, what all this what all this means is you've got a criminal element adopting a wait and see attitude, carrion waiting to feed, and no, no people feed on carrion. Carrion doesn't doesn't feed anything. So that was a major boner. Like, uh, you know, aside from that though, it's really smart. Uh, there's a uh, Anyway, uh, Kingpin's right hand man is like saying, "Ah, what the hell, blah blah blah," and she says, uh, "Well." You know, we're not concerned. Uh, we're not city or state. We're federal. He's like, welcome to the big leads, Mr. Fisk. And what's really cool about this issue is, okay, going back to uh, the Born Again storyline where uh, basically Frank Miller, David Evans Kelly took everything away from Matt Murdock. You know, he took away his law license, took blew up his home, uh, just did all kinds of stuff. Uh, and for years... Um, uh, Matt Murdock was like a short order cook in Hell's Kitchen. And you know, what's amazing is at the end of the storyline, the six issue stories, they didn't reinstate him at all. Didn't all get, you know, you know, tar you know, know, cleaned up and everything. And it went on for years like this. He was almost homeless. You know, he was just, and he and Karen Page had reunited after she sold him out. <laughs> and uh, that's the whole story there. But uh, anyway. So he's sweating a little bit because he's getting some attention. And, and the, what brought the feds to his attention was Hydra has been trying to horn in on Kingpin's uh, extremely prosperous, uh, prop, I can really talk now, prosperous uh, dealings. And he won in. And he's like, you know, fuck you. But uh, he has a flashback to when he's a kid where he was... You know, like a 
a mule for uh, drugs and stuff like that. And he accidentally killed somebody, and that's sort of washing its hands. So we kind of give him a little bit of a, a, a little bit of like what he was before. Um, so he's getting out of court, and Matt goes uh, re recess, free time, enjoy it while you can, Willie. Murdoch. So this goes back to in Born Again. Uh, what happened was uh, there was Matt Murdock was stuck in a cab that got submerged underwater after he took a beating, and this other guy, the cabbie, was in there as well. But they didn't quite show that until now. This is a flashback. What they did was they had this one guy uh, who was a total psycho. He was the one who uh, dressed up as Daredevil for a while and just was killing people rampantly. He worked for Kingpin and wrapped up this billy club that he that had blood all over it from the taxi driver. So it's basically to fr frame uh, Matt Murdock, but he didn't have to do it because uh, after it was like his insurance plan. Well, he didn't throw out that billy club. He wrapped it up and kept it uh, in a safe place. Nobody would know. It, like a safe deposit box, which, you know, most people don't know what it is. They don't ask. And, uh, look at that. Oh, God, that art. Lee Weeks was so, he's so advanced at this stage, even. It's just, like, crazy. So, anyway, what's wild is, uh, Kingpin's, uh, he gives him the, uh, gives him some money. He goes, uh, chill. Been, uh, the guy on the other side says, uh, chill. Been sitting in the back so long. What's with the rush? Come on, man. Give it the dead presidents. You want the goods? 550 in storage and late charges. I, I don't have that much cash on me. I'll have to be on credit. Takes all types. Amex, uh, MasterCard, Visa. Give it the plastic. And he sees Daredevil. I've done nothing wrong. That's not what the plastic people say, man. Your card's been rejected. What? It's mine. Shh. Crazy mother effer. I've, he sees Daredevil and he's like... I've done nothing wrong. That's so freaking... It's just stunning. It's like he's losing his mind over a lot of things that were piling up prior to this. Uh, yes, now you have. God, Lee Weeks art so great. So he is clutching this. Uh, he tells him, go away. I've made a deal with... Everything's been taken care of. Everything I'm going to make you and all your other troubles just go away you know, sound like a deal in fact it sounds like the one I had uh, had the system free you in fact it sounds a lot like the one I had the system free, free you from free to you ah, I'm blowing it I'm totally screwing up sorry well he tries to hide in a bus and he's sitting there and he's just real uh you know, he's just, he's kind of given up, but he's like, what would Vanessa think of now? His ex, his wife who left him, leave her, leave her out of this. Really great stuff. And he decides to start the engine. And look at that. That is so cinematic. And I zoom in a touch. Wow. And he swings free there. I don't know why this story isn't referenced more. It's such a great issue. Ah, uh, look at that. Lee Weeks is just... He, he can do no wrong. So what happened is Daredevil throws the evidence into a... Ga a uh, into a, a tire fire. What do you call that thing? I can't talk to it. I'm sorry. My my sinuses are messing with my uh, my senses, my radar senses. <laughs> you know, a barrel uh, that's on fire for the uh, homeless. And to destroy that, and he actually, Kingpin actually puts his fingers in the flame. And, but, it's too late now. It's not good enough to be Evans. And, the words don't come easy, but ultimately they must come. Leave it unsaid, risk dwelling on the evil this man's done, injuries he has brought down on my life and others. 
and the road traveled is one of bitterness and revenge. But let go of the hate, rise above it, and maybe there is something worthwhile that can provide an inner drive. Maybe then there's hope or something noble. I forgive you. The words don't come easy. Now the thing is, he's an Irish Catholic, and he's had to deal with his... Uh, and Frank Miller came up with that, and I know Chuck Dixon hates that th that little thing, but it... it Matt Murdock is so torn, you know, he's uh, he's a lawyer, goes by the laws, but then he's a vigilante at night going against the laws, and, uh, you know, he just sees Kingpin all destroyed, and he says, I forgive you. Anyway, what happens is, he's about to get his uh, due. He says, uh, speak in a minute, how about you picking up my shirt tomorrow, Willie? I don't understand you. Let me explain it to you. I put the tab for your bail, yeah, and I'm going to help fix things, help you uh, get you off the Malper Broad's hook. But, I, I, but only so I can have the pleasure of seeing the crawl, fat man, because it made me crawl so long. And he's like, sometimes you got to get your hands dirty. What's that garbage in the stick there? Just a bit of bone and hair. See? And I feel like a man with a second chance, a man born again. As we know, it, it never fully ends. And this is just sort of a... Uh, this is sort of like a mind game that Murdoch's messing with. He's, he's conflicted. And uh, it's a great ending for that. And, you know, Kingpin did come back. But, you know, it was like several you know, years later. But... If the book, if the series ended here, it just would have been a perfect wrap-up. I mean, but the subsequent issues are actually really good. Um, the, uh, what is it, the one he did with Scott McDaniel, I wasn't keen on, though, at the uh, Fall from Grace, because uh, uh, it was just kind of incomprehensible to read. And uh, at the beginning, it was the time when Scott McDaniel was doing this real teeny tiny, like, negative space for images. And I have the Epic Collection, but it, it for some reason, the person, the proportions are not the same, and this stuff gets squished up tight, and you can't really read it. And Chichester kind of overwrites, he, I mean, he overwrites generally, but uh, it doesn't help clear things up. But it was only after um, after they both left, and Daredevil was sort of in the wilderness years, and uh, there's some good issues there, some really good stuff. So, uh, okay, I dragged this on way too long. I probably wasted eight minutes by stumbling over my words. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I hope you enjoy it. Leave any comments below, pro or con, what you think of one character. And also help me help answer some of the questions I like, might have for Ms. Mystic. Uh, and also tell me uh, whatever whatever's on your mind. Okay? And uh, comics related. <laughs> anyway, the... Uh, Please hit like and subscribe below. Hit the bell for notifications. And uh, please share with somebody who's also a passionate comic reader. Um, and uh, that's it. And leave plenty of comments below. I don't argue with anybody. Um, you know, this is just a fun uh, YouTube channel. And uh, and I don't, but I don't encourage any like bickering between people either. It's just, hey, throw two cents in. You know, I mean, uh, there's people I've disagreed with and I'm like, well, you know, that's okay. You know, I'm not going to argue because they're they are spending a half hour with me right now, and that means that they care about the content that I'm putting out there, and that means so much. I love it. I mean, there've been times where I've thought of like just stopping the channel because I've had so many other things going on in my life, but uh, I hear a lot of nice stuff below, and it really buoys my spirits. And uh, that's about it. So uh, anyway, have a great day or night or whatever time you're watching this. And take care.